This video is the quick start guide for the System 2 plug and play starter kit servo edition. As a guide I'm going to follow along with the quick start guide document that also is available from the uh, web page for the starter kit. So let's begin by looking at what's in the box. So in the starter kit you'll get an even more abbreviated set of instructions. Two packs of green green LED cables for 16 in total. Two packs of buttons with the cables and the mounting screws for 16. You'll get three of these plugs which plug into the side of the boards so you have a quick release if you need to remove a board. You'll also receive two servo drivers and a panel controller. I've laid the boards out on the bench just like the diagram on page six of the quick start guide. And you'll see here that we have uh, cables which will connect to these plugs and the plugs can be connected and disconnected from here. I'm not going to teach you how to wire the cable as I've already prepared some. So I'll just hook these up. And that gives me power and the two wire network. So I've got the positive, the negative, then the can high and the can low, and they're all connected to each other. And ultimately they connect to the power supply as well. You'll see termination jumpers mentioned. I fitted one to this servo board. And I'm going to fit the second one to this servo board here, as they are at the logical ends of my network. Fit them and forget them. I've also taken an LED cable pair from the kit and I'm going to connect it into output number one, ensuring the black lead is towards the outer edge of the board. I'll do the same with the button and I'll attach it with the black lead to the outer edge of the board on input number one. So I've now attached a button and a pair of lights to the first input. Finally, I'll attach a loose servo to output number one on the first board with the signal lead, which is the light one, towards the inside. And I have another servo here. This one is already fitted to a, uh, a servo mount, and I'll connect that to servo one on the bottom board. All that remains to do is to attach power And we can see now all of the boards have a flashing light, almost, except the bottom one, there it goes. So they're all flashing, which means the boards are healthy and we're ready to go. So we've preset pre -set this up as um, 1 to 16 as the V ports and 1 to 8 and 9 to 16 for the V ports on the servo drivers. But I don't know which board is which because they're unmarked. So by connecting to input number one, if I press the button, we can now see how uh, this is the one connected to input number one. So this is board 1A in the easy config. So I'll just attach the second switch to number nine on the panel controller. If I press this, the second servo should move and there it goes. So now I have attached channel one or the first servo controller and channel nine, which is the second. And that's as easy as it gets to set up. All of the channels are working and I haven't had to do any configuration at this point. I've tidied up the, uh, the bench a little bit. I've put two buttons together uh, they're still connected to port one and port nine, which is one and then eight ports and then nine and the rest of the eight ports. And I've put the, uh, two pairs of LEDs here so that you can see. When I press a button, the servo moves, the lights flash, and again with this one. And they're moving at the default speed. So we've just connected our starter kit. Um, how do I know that I'm talking to 
this board or this board? And there's an easy way to find out. If we look at the admin page on the screen, you'll see here it's telling me it's a servo controller. The product type is servo. And there's a clue in the name serve 8 dash B5ACEC, which will match the serial number on the side. Let's say you've got a whole bunch of boards together. If you click the locate board, what will happen is you see the orange light, the yellow light is flashing its head off now, it's flashing really fast. That's a feature to help you locate uh, where that board is. And if I click it again, it'll stop. Notice also in the status log here, it's, uh, report, it's had all the boards on the network report in. So that I can see here, in addition to the board that I'm connected to on this web interface, I also have a servo driver uh, of this IP address, and I have a panel controller of this IP address. So if I click the blue link, it'll take me to the admin panel for the other servo controller, which is this one. Click, and there we go. And we can see there it has a, a serial number of 900284. Let's go back. And if I click to the panel controller, I can discover that quickly as well. And there it is, panel A07C10. Right, so I'm gonna give you a quick tip now to help you. Uh, in the top right, there's a location box. Enter a location that's meaningful to you. I suggest you enter, like if you're numbering your baseboards, uh, put the numbers first. Don't use the word baseboard seven at the back because we will be using this in a future software release to report, to add to this screen here, the location. So we'll be sending the first few characters of this back to mean something. So I might put B for a uh, four, so baseboard 14 dash B, fiddle yard. And now that'll store that. All I have to do is click save changes. And now that will be stored. And every time we look at this page, it'll say 14B fiddle yard. Let's go to the next one. I'm going to make this uh, 15C yard. So it's on baseboard 15C and I'll save those changes. I think I'll just shrink this screen here. It's a bit too big. And for the other, I'll do um, 12A uh, tunnel. So put the baseboard number first and then something that's meaningful to you after that and save changes. So now when I go back to the respective um, interface, I can say, ah, oh, this is 14B fiddle yard. So I know where it is. But if there's several boards on the baseboard, click the locate board here and you'll get the, um, the flashing to highlight uh, which one it is. We've also got the handy, click on the hyperlink and it'll take you to the respective board. So we've got a servo control here. Uh, how do we go about adjusting it? So if I click on the first one, we can see it's moving in a nice linear manner. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to adjust the speed. Left is slower, fast is fast, uh, right is faster. So it's moving now at its fastest, which is about one second, or the slowest, which is about 30 seconds. Um, it's actually 29 and a bit seconds, but that's going to take 30 seconds. So if you're doing an interesting project and you want to open a door, a gate, a barrier, whatever, you can adjust it. Of course, while it's moving, you can adjust it. You're free to adjust it. There we go, and I've sped it up. If I want to move the range, the low range of the servo, this relate low and high relate to the, the size or the width of the pulse. And not all servos are created equal, so some will move left, some will move right. It'll depend whether the, the servo horn is underneath, at the bottom, or on the top. But um, if I've got the servo over to one side, I can move the range slider. Can you see here, the servo is moving in real time. Now, to make the, the high range work, you have to move the servo over. So I'm going to move it over now. And now I can adjust the other side as well. If I move the low range, it's adjusting it, but you won't see it live. 
And the idea is that we want to limit fast movement, uncontrolled movement of a servo when we're adjusting the range. So to adjust that, flick it back. Now if I push this all the way over, you'll see it'll go a lot further, but it goes in a nice smooth manner. So the next question is, how would you center a servo? Because there's no obvious servo centering button. Nothing could be easier. Take the, take the sliders, the range sliders, and push them together like you're going cross-eyed with a pair of eyes. And there's your servo centered. And now you can go back and adjust it for whatever you need. If you need, uh, you know, sliding a slider is great, but you want an absolute value, well, you can type it in here. So I could put 500, which is the halfway point, 500 here, and now it's set back to its default value, back in the middle. Uh, the range is from one to 1,000 on each side. So ultimately it's a, a range adjustment of 2,000. Let's put that back. If you need to reverse a servo, click the reverse button. And now it's reversed. So when I press the button, it will now move in the opposite direction. And I can click it again and it's back and then I can move it. You may have noticed the type column here. This allows me to select the personality for that servo. So if I change this to a semaphore, right, this is gonna go nuts. Have a look at this, see what happens. And back. So we've got a big bounce, looks crazy because it's not in control. So what I will do now is I'll get that bounce under control. I'll set the range for about 45 degrees of movement and I'll just increase the speed a little and we can look at it now. Looks better. And you're free to play with that and adjust it to your desire. And the other thing we have, let's put these back in the middle. 500, 500. We, I prefer sometimes text entry and I can tab around the fields quickly and enter values or enter repeat values. It's faster than a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Uh, let's put the speed back. Uh, speed will go to, uh, let's go 100. Now, if you're an American railroader, you'll love this. We've got the wigwag. Obviously, I've, I've got it connected here to uh, piano wire, but you can see, click the button, and the wigwag starts to increase its oscillation. Press it again, and it stops. Back on. Now if you notice, I'm not quite centered there. So whilst it's running, what I'm going to do, I'll increase the speed and I'll just bring the low range down a little bit more. See if I bring it right down, it's going further to the left. And now I'm moving it back. Let's slow it down a bit. Till I get the motion that I'm looking for. If I want to widen the range, just push the sliders apart. like so. And when I turn it off, it'll dampen down slowly. Now, when our sound module comes out, you'll be able to link it to that. So you'll get the ding, 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 or whatever audio you have recorded in conjunction with the operation of the servo. So I've been in, uh, I've made a few changes. Uh, I've pressed a load of buttons. I've typed in all sorts of weird values. And so on. And I've I think I've made a bit of a mess. How do I get back? Reset to defaults. Now, all the changes we've made at this point haven't been saved and they won't be saved until you click the save changes button. So if you want to keep them, I don't know, let's reverse the last three as well. Click save changes. Now, every time this board boots, it's going to appear just like that. If you can try to, um, remember how this is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the board to reboot. And what it'll do is it'll restart the board and it'll refresh the page. You get the please wait setting underneath. And everything's come back to how, how we just set it. But you've made a mistake, how do you clean it out? So you go reset defaults and it's default. Now we've reset the defaults, but nothing is saved. If I restore, if I reload it, it'll go back to the old values. Watch, um, I'll restart. Page will reload in five seconds, rebooting. 
please wait. And that's the changes we just made. So you kind of get to play and decide if you like something. And then once you've decided, you can commit it. So I'm going to clean this out, wipe it out. I want it back to defaults. So I'll go reset to defaults. And if you look underneath, it's telling us defaults loaded. Don't forget to save changes if you wish to keep them. All you've got to do is read and it'll tell you. So I'm going to save the changes. Changes saved. Now when I restart the system, three, two, one, boom. It's gone back as its default. And if I press the button, you see I get the default points motion at the default speed. So this is just a quick pre preview of the starter kit and how it goes together. We've shown you that just by connecting the cables, it's going to operate out of the box before you even go close to the admin interface. And on the admin interface, it's quite a powerful tool. It does a lot. And for further details on that, you should look at the respective videos for the driver board or panel controller that you're using. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.